Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Photos in the Field, the series in which I take you out on my journey is to take landscape photos, so you can hopefully learn from both my successes and my failures, and also to give you a bit of inspiration and get out there yourself if you're able to at the minute. In the last few episodes of Photos in the Field, I've been playing a bit with panoramic photography, so basically taking a number of frames and then stitching them together in Lightroom. And I've kind of messed around with this a little bit, but I've got this idea, and normally when you take panoramic photos and stitch them together, you need to make sure that there's not too much movement. Otherwise, when you stitch it together, you can get like weird artifacts and things just don't line up and things just don't kind of join together. So I wanna try and combat this with a bit of an experiment. What I'm gonna do is take some extra long exposures in a panoramic format and then stitch them together. And I'm hoping that the long exposures for each of the frames will actually counteract that movement. So when it comes to stitch them together, the stitch will be a lot better. So this is a bit of an experiment. Stay with me to the end and I'll show you the results. Let's go. So when I left the house there wasn't much wind but there seems to be a bit more now. Our sand's a bit soft. What I'm going to do is have a quick scout around this location and try and find something that I think is going to work for a panoramic. Just going to hop onto these rocks in a sec. Just have a little look. So I'll just give you a quick look. So I've got this bay around here and we've got a few rocks at various places which might kind of form some nice interest because with a long exposure all of the water is going to basically flatten out oh, okay you need something to kind of break up we don't need it but sometimes it's nice to have something that's going to break up all of that flat milky uh, white stuff uh, okay I'm going to try not to fall down these rocks here. So far, so good. Oh, there we go. So there's like a little stream coming out here. That might make some kind of interesting uh, leading lines. To wait and see. I think I might just head around that bay there or around that corner and see what we can see. Just gonna have to time this right because these waves keep coming up and down here. Okay, go! All right, I think we're, I think we're safe. Just better watch where I'm going, I suppose. So not quite as much interest around here. The wind's not quite as bad here though. But I think I kind of like that bit of rock out there. So I'm gonna head back this way, I think. I wanna say something, but you are all that I see. 
you got dynamite. That smile's gonna be the end of me. I bet you taste like chocolate. Can I have it for free? I'm an explosion. That smile's gonna be the end of me. I wanna say something, but you are all that I see. You oh, I think I quite like the chances for this composition here with this rock in the background. The problem is where I want to set up, just here, is where the tide keeps coming in and out, or the waves keep coming in and out. So it's really not, really not a safe place to set up, especially with a long exposure. I'm gonna try up here. This looks a lot drier up here, a bit farther away from the beach, but not sure if the composition here is gonna be as good. Can't quite see around, just gonna take a look up here. When you do arrive somewhere and you're looking to take some photos, it's a good idea not to just kind of get there, stop, take the photo and move on. It's a good idea to spend a bit of time just wandering around and looking for different compositions. Yeah, I'm really not feeling this. I'm gonna take a look down there next. So just about halfway along this beach, I don't know if you can see that back there somewhere. There's like a little waterfall, just a little stream really coming out of the side of the cliff. So that might be interesting for some long exposures, just gotta cross this stream here. There's some quite interesting um, like layers in the sand here. You've got like light sand and dark sand. That could make some quite interesting foreground potentially. So there is a bit of potential at this location. Because it's going to take quite a long time to shoot this panorama with each long exposure, I want to make sure that I've looked at all the opportunities before I actually set up and start. So I might come back here in a minute. Ugh. There's quite a few of these little blue bottle jellyfish washed up at the minute. Glad I'm not in bare feet. A little bit of rain there which is par for the course for these kind of videos if you've watched my channel for any length of time. If you're not already a subscriber, feel free to do so. And turn on notifications, of course. Some quite interesting rock formations here. Kind of pockmarked, pockmarked rocks. Because we're gonna go for some movement, we are gonna get some movement in the sky today because there's uh, a lot of nice cloud which is going to all smooth out and look really nice. But I just want to make sure that we've got some movement in the water as well. <laughs> it's just started to spit with rain which is really annoying because I just found a composition that I quite liked. It's going to test the uh, weatherproofing on the A7S 3 I do get a bit nervous when it rains on cameras. So I might have to put this away in a minute if it gets any worse. Just having a look up this headland here, or over this rock at least. And there's some, there's a lot of nice rocks around which gives us some opportunity. <laughs> I think I need to wipe that lens. So you can see behind me here there's, where are we? Some nice opportunity there maybe for some movement over the rocks, water over the rocks. The problem with this bit here is that we've got this big rock down here, so if I go and set up down there for the panoramic, that's gonna block a lot of the ocean. And as we're going for movement, it's not exactly what I want. Definitely gonna have to come back to this spot one day. So I think I'm gonna go back there and then see if there's a composition. <laughs> so come back to this spot with these potmark rocks. And I just realized I've left my phone in the car, which I need to do the remote long release on the A7R4. So I'm gonna walk all the way back up there, walk all the way back down here, and then try and get this panoramic done. <laughs> okay, back now, I'm just gonna take five minutes. Just have a little drink and compose myself. As well as the rain, whoa, I just spilt water all over my tripod, oh dear. <laughs> Another problem with this spot is that the waves are crashing on these rocks over here 
and if the wind blows in a certain direction it's actually blowing spray blowing 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 spray this way towards where the camera is going to be set up so that's going to cause a bit of a problem as well I think I'm just going to do it anyway also we've got some really dark clouds on the horizon there which aren't looking too friendly so what I might do I was going to maybe plan like a four or five frame panorama but because of the conditions I might try and reduce that to maybe three all right I'm going to get set up and drive my tripod what I like to do when I'm planning to shoot a panorama is just find a composition that you're roughly happy with and then hold up the camera and then like sweep across where you're going to shoot the panorama just before you get the tripod and everything set up that'll just give you a quick idea whether you think it's going to work or not so I think that's going to work nicely if I shoot from about this height I'm probably going to need four frames but the first three will get most of the interest and the fourth one will just finish off what's behind the camera there all right let's get set up using the trusty three-legged thing Winston 2.0 as the tripod here just get this leveled out nice thing about this tripod is it's got like a built-in spirit bubble just on the top here just make sure everything's fully locked off because we don't want any movement of the tripod it's gonna be tricky today actually because of the wind when you put the big filter on the front it acts like a sail so we'll just have to see how we get on I think it's okay to have movement in the things that are moving, but you don't want movement in the things that are stationary, like the rocks. Before you let go of the camera, just make sure the ball head's tightened. Had a few near misses in the past. Next thing I'm gonna do is fit the leaf filter holder to the lens. First thing I need to do is fit the adapter ring. And this is what the actual filter holder clips onto. Some really black clouds over there. Next thing you do is clip on the actual filter holder and it's into this that the filters slot. First thing I need to do is find out what the normal exposure is going to be and also get everything leveled up on the tripod itself. You also need to set your focus and your exposure or your starting exposure before you put the long exposure filter on because you basically can't see anything once you put it on and autofocus won't work and you won't be able to see for manual focus. So I've just checked on the Lee app and I want about a 16 minute exposure per frame which means I need a 1 30th shutter speed to start with before we put the ND filter on. So we're in manual mode. First off, I'm gonna set the focus. I really like the feature on the A7R4 that you can turn on so when you manually focus or manually turn the focus ring, it zooms in so you can really check your focus. Hopefully I've got it right or when I show you the photo at the end, you can let me know in the comments that I didn't. I think that's a reasonable focus. Now I want to make sure that in manual mode I've got 1 30th of a second. So what I'll do is I'll start off by setting the shutter speed to 1 30 and then I'll adjust the aperture and ISO to get where we need to be exposure wise. I hope you can see on the screen there, so I've set shutter speed at 1 30. Now I'm just adjusting the aperture and the ISO so we get a meter reading of about zero. I'm probably going to try and slightly underexpose a little bit as well. So I'm going to drop the ISO to 100 there. It's giving us a meter reading of plus seven still. So now we can adjust the aperture if we want to. And at F9, we're giving an overexposure on the meter about plus three. So I want to get that a bit lower. I want to go, I want to underexpose a bit. Okay, so F16 gives us that minus 0 0.3 underexposure. And I'm hoping that'll keep some of the detail in the sky. I think it's just starting to rain, but I'm going to carry on anyway. I hope. Got to get rid of these sunglasses, they keep blowing off everywhere. Oh, and here comes the rain. Yay. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you'll notice that at least half the time when I come out and try and make these videos, the heavens open. Which is a bit annoying, really. And here comes the wind. It's turning into full-on rain now. I'm going to try and... I think I'm gonna to have to pack things away, sorry. Day two of trying to get this photo. Weather was actually okay until I got to the car park and then the rain started again. So just hanging around to see if this shower passes. Then I'm gonna walk back to where we were yesterday and try again. Finally managed to start the first frame of this panoramic. 
I'm using the app to control the bulb shutter speed. I've set a bulb shutter speed of 16 minutes. I've got the ND filter on the lens and I'm hoping to get three or four panels. <laughs> Already had a little tiny spit spot of rain and once again, as yesterday, clouds on the horizon. There's also a little patch of bright cloud there, which is encouraging at least. I think one of the most important traits for landscape photographers and any photographer really, is that uh, trait of persistence and just to keep trying. I was pretty annoyed yesterday when I had to stop filming and stop photography because of the rain, but I've come out again this morning and I'm gonna try again. You never know. Sometimes the second time you try and take a photo, you might actually end up with better conditions than the first time. Anyway, we've got the first frame being taken at the minute. I'm gonna grab the Kindle and try and learn a few things while I'm waiting for the first exposure. And then we'll go grab the second, third, and maybe fourth exposure, hopefully. Crossing fingers for the rain today. So at the risk of this video starting to sound like a weather report, the wind's picking up a little bit again. The clouds don't look like completely blanket kind of black, but there's a few little menacing ones and I just every now and again get a tiny hint, tiny little droplet of rain on me. At least we've got one panel, one photo. So if nothing else, I can show you one photo. Currently shooting the second panel now and there's quite a lot of changing light at the minute and that's one of the challenges of really long exposures because the lighting can change quite a lot in the course of 16 minutes. It's quite easy to overexpose if the light comes out. When I set up the initial exposure, I set it up so we were, like we did yesterday, minus 0.3 or third of a stop underexposed. So I'm doing that to help try and counteract any brightness that might come into the scene during the exposure. I've actually been quite impressed with the dynamic range of the Sony a7R4 since I got it. You tend to be able to recover quite a lot of the highlights and also some of the shadows as well. So that's going to help a bit if we end up with slightly overexposed panels. We can try and recover those in Lightroom. Time for some more Kindle. One of the awesome things about long exposure photography is that because it takes so long to do, it really kind of forces you to slow down and appreciate where you are. So it's a really beautiful spot. Even though I'm reading my Kindle, I keep looking up and just going, wow, so awesome to be able to take photos in a spot like this, especially when a lot of the world is not able to really go out or go very far at the minute. Very lucky to be here in Western Australia at the minute. We've got just over a minute left of the second panel of this panorama. Then I'm going to move it around and we'll get the third panel. Got just over a minute left on this second panel of this panorama. Then I'll move the camera around a bit and then we'll start work on the third panel. All right, that's another panel we've captured. That's awesome. I'm gonna try, um, try my luck and uh, go for another one now. That's another panel of the panorama done. I'm not sure if I should try and push my luck and try and get one more panel just for safety. It's always good to try and get maybe an extra panel or two in when you're doing a panorama. The clouds are coming over again, but I'm going to do it anyway. So that's the final panel of the panorama taken. I'll throw the final edited image up on screen in just a minute so you can see it. Hopefully it came out okay. Obviously I haven't seen it yet because we've got to take it back and stitch it together. If you like this video, please click the like button. That really helps the channel. I think the wind and the rain's coming now. And also if you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. Right, I think I better get packed away. So 
So here we are back again. This is the uh, third time here. Already got the first frame of the panorama happening there. There's no wind. No wind. And hopefully no rain. Look, kind of no rain clouds, I hope. If you remember before, I was trying to take a composition up there. Let's go take a little walk while that frame's happening. Once again, we've got a 16 minute exposure. So yeah, before we were on those rocks there and you just saw the, uh, <laughs> the failed water, Watergate panorama. And I didn't really like the, uh, didn't really like the composition. Basically, I was trying to get movement in the sky and in the water. So it kind of made sense to kind of try and feature more of the water and more of the sky in the actual frame. And that's why I didn't really like the composition because it didn't really result in the effect that I was actually going for. So that was my fault for not paying more attention to the, uh, the setup. So what I've done today, changed up things a little bit. And what we're gonna try and do, let me show you, is we're gonna try and get a panorama starting about there and then sweeping around to those rocks just there. There we go. That's the plan anyway. There's no wind and no rain. Who would have thought on this channel? All right, I'm gonna let the camera do its thing and we'll get a few exposures and then we'll take a look at them. One of the things about doing long exposure photography is that it takes a long time, or at least relatively long time. Multiply that by a number of frames if you're gonna try and do a, a long exposure panoramic, which I'm not entirely convinced is a sensible idea after everything that's happened so far. Anyway, one of the things about doing long exposure photography times multiple frames is that it takes a really long time. So I'm shooting 16 minute exposures and I'm probably gonna shoot at least four panels. So that's like just over an hour, if my maths is right, just over an hour to shoot one frame. Compare that with just using your iPhone, which is nothing wrong with, or just taking a snapshot or just setting up on your tripod and doing a quick, quick exposure. It's a long time, an hour versus maybe one two fiftieth of a second. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it really encourages a sense of patience. So we're currently shooting the second panel. First panel looked okay on the back of the screen, I hope. It's always hard to tell on the small screen though. Another interesting thing about long exposure photography is it kind of teaches you or forces you to give up control to a certain extent. Once you hit that shutter release button, if you're waiting 16 minutes or even longer, you kind of have no control of what's gonna happen in the frame in front of you. Like there were some birds flying around and people could walk in front of the frame. With a long exposure, some of that won't actually show up, but it does kind of teach you an interesting lesson about basically just surrendering control to nature or to the scene and uh, just having a certain amount of faith or trust that things will work out. It's kind of true of life, I suppose. So far, so good. Fingers crossed that it'll actually stitch in Lightroom when we get back to the studio. I decided to take one more, uh, one more panel just to kind of try and finish off the right-hand side of the image because I thought it kind of didn't look finished. It was just kind of stopping mid-ocean. Like I've mentioned before, it's always a good idea when you're shooting a panoramic to try and shoot maybe an extra one or two frames either side. It's a lot harder when you're doing a long exposure panoramic because each extra frame takes a lot more time. All right, let's wait for this last frame and then I'll throw up what is hopefully the final image on the screen. Don't forget to like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. 